Hey everybody. Okay, my name's Holly. Welcome. So nice to have you here. Um, and uh, someone left a comment that I just loved. It's coffee time. It's coffee time with Holly. So I film these really early in the morning. And so it's nice that um, a lot of you can join me for a cup of coffee. And today, the motivational mug, it doesn't look very motivational, does it? But I love this. I love the shape of it. And when I saw it, I thought, it's a blank slate. It's, we can make it whatever we want. So I just something about that was very appealing so today what motivated me when i poured my coffee was this this notion that we can make this day our own so we'll see if that comes up i don't know if that's going to apply in the reading somehow or not but um i am a psychic medium i am not a card reader but i do like using tarot and oracle decks as a jumping off point in general readings um i uh, am an energy reader and um, so uh, I just intuitively, psychically, mediumistically, whatever comes up is what happens. So anyway, let's get started. Oh, uh, subscribe if uh, you haven't and you are so inclined. And uh, if you like the video or any of it resonates with you, please uh, like as well. And so um, again, this is a general reading, so it can't resonate for everyone, but if there's something in it that does seem to reach out to you, you know, maybe there is a message in there for you. And if not, just leave it and let somebody else pick up that little bit. Okay, so asking for the messages for the collective. What is in the uh, best and highest good for all involved? Who needs to know what? Okay, I woke up this morning with a little pressure in my head um, and it disappeared but now it's back so I know that has something to do with what's going on give me just a second to tune in a little deeper someone's having severe anxiety I know I was yesterday y'all seriously um, but this is someone who is having anxiety but what spirit wants, this is a short message, but what spirit wants anyone with that almost, it, it, it could escalate to almost being crippling where you get migraines or, and like I had an ocular migraine yesterday, which is so flipping weird. Okay, but anyway, um, but I'm getting that queasy, nauseous feeling. Um, you can control this. Always get medical care, and you know you have free will. You can do whatever you want. Uh, but please make sure you always see someone who is a qualified medical professional should you need that. But what I am getting spiritually is that we are in control of our bodies, and at a cellular level, ooh, it's getting clearer now. Um, thank you. So talk to your body. Help it to understand that if you are in a safe place, which I hope you are, that you are safe, you can heal and just tell your body, take care of yourself. I am doing the best I can. It's all, I know that sounds weird. It sounds like a dissociation, which is not always healthy, but it's, it's as though, here's the way I look at it. Whenever I get these messages or I understand that there's some kind of healing that needs to happen. Again, mind, body, spirit connection is huge this year. It's always big, but this year is the year to get it together, people. You know, okay. And I'm talking to myself as well. I'm in there with you. So um, sometimes I address my own body as its own physical entity because it is sort of separate from, from the soul in that it's the vehicle we are driving while we are in this lifetime, but we're not taking it with us to the other side. So while it's here, just like you talk to your car in the morning, come on, baby, you can turn over, come on, you gotta crank it on, or, you know, um, just, uh, I know it's cold, just, you can do it, you know, just get through the next whatever, if you've got one that <laughs> is being cranky, um, a car that's being cranky, and, and just the same way we can talk to our bodies, because that is a form of affirmation. It's not woo-woo crazy talk, okay? It is a form of affirmation and self-healing. Um, 
there was a book out a long time ago and a, a high school friend of mine went to medical school and it was required reading in her coursework. It was called Love, Medicine and Miracles and it's about the mindset, it's an old, old book, but it was about how the mindset, the belief system and the internal knowing that you could heal rather than the doom and gloom of, well, this is going to be the end of me. Well, then, yeah, it probably will be. Um, that self-talk was actually taught in my friend's class in medical school um, that um, those people were more likely with the positive self-talk and the affirmations were more likely to have a higher success rate of health, wellness, and overcoming whatever physical challenge they had, uh, going into remission, whatever it was. So your self-talk is important. So you can do self-talk, or I actually take it a step further and just talk to my body like it's a 15-year-old uh, kind of uh, angsty, petulant teenager. And it's like, get it together, come on, I know you can do it. And I actually visualize in my mind sort of a cell level cellular healing. We can regenerate, we can heal, we just have to believe we can do it. And then we have to do our part, clean up the diet. I had to lose some weight and clean up my diet uh, in order to allow my body to heal and take care of itself the way it needed to. Okay, that's a big long story and I'm not lecturing anyone. I promise you, you come to it when you're ready. Um, and it took me, uh, I'm, I keep talking about the 40s were my dark decade. It took me the entirety of my 40s to finally kind of get myself together, you know? All right, let me get a drink and then we're going to move on. Mm. All right, now I am going to actually this deck. I went through and I pulled out decks I haven't really used before because I felt like I just felt drawn to them. And this one is the Energy and Spirit Oracle. Yet again, Sandra Ann Taylor. I, I gravitate to a lot of her, her stuff. Um, and they're just beautiful. So this is what the box looks like. Okay. And then, again, beautiful cards. Uh, they're a little bigger, but they're not... Um, Un unmanageable you know they are a manageable deck and so I do not read reversals so um, there's that which is a little different take on this Ugh, let me get that okay so what is the message for the collective what is it I feel like this is a card that we will need to use as a focal point for any sort of reflection or meditation today. Yes. Okay. So what is the message for a focal point for a meditative awareness today for the collective? Thank you, spirit. so excited. Ooh. <laughs> <All right. laughs> I'm sorry. Um, okay. Uh, Archangel, I have no idea who this is. Fanuel. Fanuel. P-H-A-N-U-E-L. Anybody familiar or worked with this one? Let me know. Um, okay, so the tag on the bottom is, oh, hope. Perfect. That makes sense then. Um, optimism, new beginnings, and cellular regeneration. So I have a feeling we might need to call on him for some of the cellular regeneration, but also calling in your hope. We did uh, some work on that this week too, or was it the end of last week? I don't remember. It's been within the last few days, <laughs> okay? So hope, optimism, and new beginnings. Archangel Fanuel, Fanuel, Fanuel. I'll show you again. There you go. I love that. I think that's validation that we are, we are in control of our lives. We can control our thoughts. And if we can control, if we can and we can control our thoughts, 
then we can control the direction that our lives take with the help and guidance of spirit, our higher selves, our higher power. Always come from a place of goodwill. You know, don't be a doormat, you all. No one needs to just take and take and take and be a victim. That's ridiculous. And as a matter of fact, I wrote that in response to someone. I'm so proud of everybody who has gotten out of difficult situations and into safety. Good for you. Good for you. And now it's time for us to move from being just survivors to thriving. We don't want to survive. We want to thrive. Okay? And so... That's going to look different for every single person, but we can do it. All right. Now, this little deck, we're going to see where the messages go next. Uh, this is the Thelema Tarot, and it is one of the mini decks. Love my mini decks. This is what the back looks like. Very mystical. All right. So um, this, this is just one of my go-to core feel good kind of little mini tarot decks because um i even took oh this one was oh oh look 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 they wanted me to it was the one on top that i opened up to the dolphins two of cups dolphins have been showing up a lot lately thank you for that message all right so let that resonate however it resonates with each individual person okay now all right, so, all right, what is the message for the collective? What is the message for the collective? What do you want us to know? And then guide me to know what messages to deliver. Okay, here we go. What are the messages for the collective today? What are the messages for the collective today? What are the messages for the collective today? Did one flip over? No, start it too, I think. All right. We're starting with the two of wands. Okay. And the next one is the king of pentacles. Okay. Um, I think... I've got a, I'm getting, I want to get one more because I want to see where, okay. And what is the outcome? What is the outcome of this? Please clarify. I need clarification before I open my mouth. Um, what is the clarification on the king's side? What is the clarifi clarification for the king in this equation. Okay. What is the clarification for the community? What is the clarification for the community? What is the clarification for the community, please? Excellent. Yeah. Okay. All right. So here's what I'm getting. Oh, let me show you what I got. <laughs> I guess that would help. All right, so we've got two of wands, king of pentacles, the nine of swords, and the six of pentacles. Okay? So that all came out and I felt like was on one side of this equation, the one represented by the king. Could, it, gender doesn't matter. They're, they're just qualities and traits. Okay, so the, uh, a very dominant kind of, uh, not domineering, but um, um, someone who is, is established and has, um, I feel like this is a respected person in their field. They're just older and settled, but it's a veneer. Okay, there's a lot of chaos inside with this person. All right, and then I asked for the person in the collective for whomever this message is on the other end of it. And that is the Two of Swords. But then there is the Eight 
of Pentacles. And then we have the Queen of Wands. It's gone with your sassy self. All right. Now, this is what I was getting as these were coming out. So first row, there is a king, an established individual who was concerned about, I think, appearances, not, not appearances like um, having the designer labels and all that kind of thing, but the need for respectability, okay? And I feel like this king is not resting well. This king is not sleeping well at night. This king is reminiscing. This king is starting to realize all the things that, and I'm just going to say he to make it easy, that he thought would be important really isn't so important. Um, I think for the first time in this king's life, he's, he's understanding the idea of aging and mortality and being alone. So he's going back to the past. And he wants to try to balance the scales of the past, give to the past. But the past is gone, and he knows that. So he is basically in this position where he's constantly watching. And if this is you and not someone you're dealing with or someone you knew or know, whatever, you can, you know, um, take it how it resonates, if at all. Now, when I ask, so, okay, that's fine. This person could be starting to, not, not a full dark night of the soul kind of thing, but it feels like someone is going through uh, intense, for the first time, self-reflection. Real self-reflection. Because uh, there was a lot of deluding oneself involved in this person's journey. The reflection could lead to an awakening that would be incredible for this, for this king. And open up a new way of life. And for the first time, I think, in his life, true happiness. So I hope so. Uh, but what is, what, are, what is everybody else supposed to do about it? And the answer is absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing, because it's not your battle to fight, and it's not for you to fix whomever else this is. This could be a friend, a brother, a part, it feels like an ex, if anything, it's someone who's not in your life on a regular basis uh, because they just had to get their stuff together, you know? But um, I think for a lot of you, it could actually be a, a really deep friendship that you have or had with someone that kind of had a falling out. So don't be surprised if the friendship starts to blossom again, because um, I feel like this person is trying to make amends within himself and is a little embarrassed by his behavior, but at the same time needs a friend. So. You do what you need to do, and if you feel like this friendship could be resurrected and you guys could, you know, hang out and be BFFs again, then okay. But um, if not, then that's okay too. Just, you know, understand that this person is struggling. And I would hope that we, we could all look at people in that situation with kindness and, and grace. Uh, but now, but that's their struggle, okay? So I've said this before, you know, we all carry baggage, but we can't unpack anyone else's bag. They got to do that themselves. And this person has flipped the lid open on a steamer trunk of stuff. All right. Now, so for the other half of it, and we're going to call that uh, the, the sh I'm just going to use the pronoun she because that makes it clear who I'm talking about because the queen of wands came up. So this is, but it doesn't have to be. Again, it's the gender is irrelevant. It's the, the traits. Um, this is someone who, in relation to this person and their struggle, they want to help, but they understand they can't. The crossroads uh, is not for oneself, but it's 
wishing, hoping, wanting the best and realizing I can't help you. And if I try to, it might shortchange your journey. So you got to figure your stuff out, man. You got to figure it out. Um, however, our Queen of Wands is doing all right here. She's busy. She's going about her life. She is becoming prosperous. She is, and prosperous doesn't always have to mean money. It can mean in terms of self-respect, self-awareness, and that's what I'm, I'm hearing more than anything. Uh, there is someone who's feeling for the first time or for the first time in a long time, really good about herself, okay? And she knows who she is. Ooh, that's a nice feeling. That was just like a wave that came over. Good for you. You know what? People don't have to understand you. You know what? They don't. You know when you are doing the right thing and you know when you know who you are and what you stand for and, and it's easy to treat people well and with kindness when you're not carrying around a lot of insecurity. And so while this king is on his journey of healing that he has to do within himself, and I hear he's doing a lot of projecting too. So I don't know what that's about, but somebody's doing a lot of projecting. So don't, don't stress about it. Just let them do their thing. And you may end up hearing from someone who's just like, hey, you know, they may even be ready to issue an apology or something. I don't know, but whatever it is, they're on their own road. The Queen of Wands, I love this card. This is gorgeous. This is a gorgeous queen with her staff of fiery knowledge. Well, sometimes that's a sword, but in this case, she is grounded, planted. She knows who she is. She's looking to the future. She is, she's in good shape. She is in good, good shape and she feels good. So while this other person is letting the past dictate, well, that just fell. Uh, while the, King is still working on self-healing self for the first time probably in his life, addressing old issues. The queen has, the queen has done her work. She's almost at the other end of it and coming out the other side of it. So good for her. Okay. And I'm not, I'm just, I was very, very sloppy shuffle. Things were just falling out. I, I was just like, mm, no, not feeling it. Okay. So there's that. So. We've had messages about uh, self-healing. We had messages about a family member or friend or former partner who is just now kind of coming into their own, but that's separate from you. And because you've been doing your work. You've been doing a lot of work. And now, oh, an Archangel uh, Fanwell, I guess that's right, with the message of hope. So good for us. Yay. All right. So the last deck I'm going to do is, this one's a cool one. All right. Again, guess who? Sandra Ann Taylor. Well, hold on. This was yeah. Uh, so Sandra Ann Taylor and Kimberly Weber. I think Kimberly Weber may have been the artist. Uh, it's called the Priestess of Light. The cards are a little dark, I think. I don't mean dark like, ooh, bad, scary, spooky, dark. I mean, like, literally, visually, they're a little on the dark side, which is a shame because when I read about the artwork, which is stunning, if I, if I have it, if I understand this correctly, um, the cards are based on pieces of artwork that were created us using like powdered or crushed stones, almost like um, a sand painting kind of thing, and or in the paint. And so they, they in person, I think, have like an iridescent quality. I love anything iridescent. I love it so much. Um, but it doesn't really show up in these cards and they're a little dark, I think. I mean, like I said, visually dark to see. Like this one, I just opened up to, which this, I can feel it in my chest. So this is a, a supposed to, we're supposed to see it card. Angelic assistance, divine, loving, guidance, support. 
that is one of the brightest cards visually in the deck. Can you imagine what that would look like with the with the the light and the iridescence of whatever paint and gemstone powder was you I mean I can only imagine this is an, a stunning card that's an important one I feel like that's I'm gonna put my glasses on for this part so what is the message what is the message for the collective from the priestess of light oracle deck they're saying take the one off the top I will I'll put it there face down I don't know what it is yet I feel like there are going to be three different, distinctly different messages, and I think the cards are supposed to be, as they present themselves, are supposed to be read individually because they are three messages for three distinct groups of people. They're saying take that one off the top. Okay. I still haven't seen any of them. And they want me to shuffle this one in the regular way. All right. And what is the third? What is the third card? And this one's sticking to my hand. Is this it? No. That was just me being a bad, sh <laughs> a bad shuffle. There we go. Okay. This third one, I feel like that message is going to be for a younger person. All right, and I don't know what it is yet. All right, so the first one. Oh, lovely. All right. This one has, it looks like a hawk on top of her head. And she is holding that core inner light. And it's called Ancient Wisdom. Ancient Wisdom and Miracles. Okay? Ancient Wisdom and Miracles. I had a feeling, I just, I had a feeling. Why am I surprised by that? I had, <laughs> I had a feeling when I pulled that deck, there was going to be something about either one of the other, either the energy and spirit oracle or the priestess of light oracle. I had a feeling there was going to be a card dealing with ancestors and ancestral work. That came up earlier in the week too, about last week, I think, about, because today is only Tuesday, um, about um, clearing ancestral trauma. So... Miracles and Ancient Wisdom, that is an ancestor card, okay? So for one group in the collective, and some of these may overlap for all of you, but this one is about, I want to make sure I got it right, so I'm asking them to, to feed me what I need to know. Okay. Even if you came from a difficult family, we'll leave it at that. Your ancestors were not all like that. Take pride in where you come from further back in the line before all the trauma happened because it's this image of letting yourself energetically kind of lean back and lean into the strength of the people that came before you. Ask them specifically in your energetic ancestral DNA line for this lifetime to help you overcome the obstacles that their descendants, your recent relatives may have put you through and to help you see the strength and beauty that you have manifested within you in this lifetime from this genetic line. Uh, I knew someone who referred to that as calling on the ancestors who served well. And I think that's a beautiful phrase. So if that helps you, that's for one group. All right, what is the middle one? Oh, okay. And this one has a bobcat on her head. <laughs> the first card was card 39. This card is card 52. Okay. Uh, those numbers are going to be important for someone. Um, all right, this is Hidden Knowledge, Akashic Records, Silent Understanding. Okay, if you're not fam familiar with the Akashic Records, the Akasha is what's called or considered the library or warehouse of all the lives we've ever lived and the knowledge 
we can we we learned from each of those lifetimes. Um, an, an akashic record reading is very different than a psychic reading because you're tapping into different information. Um, interesting. Okay, this is interesting because the first one was about leaning into and gaining healing through the ancestral DNA line of the people who served well for your family in this lifetime. This one is about understanding your repetitive patterns based on all of your past lives in the Akasha, in the library of the soul. This is tapping back into that first, or the, not the first, but the tarot reading about you coming into sort of the truth, wisdom, and knowledge of who you are. And you've, you've, you're kind of come, for those of you who are coming out of the process of doing all your internal work, this feels like last steps of tying up loose ends. We are always working on ourselves, but you are, you are in a whole new place of healing, okay? So you go, so again, these don't have to overlap, but they might. But for some of you, you're going to be at the, a little earlier stage where you're still working on the DNA line healing. Some of you are going to be at the end of process of that, where you then start working on your own past life lineage and the... And you can go to the Akashic records and the uh, Akasha or library of the soul um, in a meditation even. Um, the last card. Oh, I love this. And this felt like this is a woman reaching out toward the ocean while touching her heart, that heart light. I'm sorry, I just hit the microphone. I hope I didn't make a weird noise. Um, opening heart, deep connections and water blessings. Hey, I'm all about the ocean and some water blessings. Um, look at the light coming down from her head into her heart and in her hand, in the palm chakra, she is an energy center, um, sister ocean, sister water healing. So for that one, it is, and that is card number 11. Drawing down the energy, reaching out the here and now. Sister water, Mother Earth, all that is coming into our own, finding our place, finding our peace. We've done our work. Once we do peace with our ancestral line in this lifetime, and then we make peace with the patterns of our past life lineage, the above, divinity of spirit, and where we are on this planet come together and we can let our heart finally heal. This is a spread of healing. This is talking about healing. And it doesn't matter what age you are. I know I said I felt like this was a younger one uh, and this could be for a younger person. But I also feel like this is um, a card of rejuvenation. And just like Archangel Fenwell, bringing hope and optimism, that brings a youthful, joyful spirit. So I think the youthful feeling is the feeling of regeneration, rejuvenation, and understanding that we are children in the eyes of spirit and we are the children of God. Mother, Father, God, thank you. Oh, that was such a wonderfully settling, healing, lovely message. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. All right, I think that's going to be it for today. And um, that happened... That, that, went, that went really fast. <laughs> okay. I love you all. Be well. Write your own story today. And make it a good one. Because you deserve it.
We all deserve it. Daggone it, man. We deserve it. All right. I'll talk to you later. Bye.